something else. Are you sure you still want to become a teacher? At this point, I have no other choice, man. Why? You going? Because I've already gone this far. What's your degree? It's a, it's an IDS degree, interdisciplinary studies. The certification is just like an attachment to it. So it's it's not like my degree is gonna say interdisciplinary studies, and that's it. But I'm gonna have the certification. But I mean, I don't know. I may change my mind. I I mean, December is supposed to when I graduate. So we'll you see. will graduate. We'll see. Why did you want to become the teacher though? So it started four years ago. Um, we took my son to a school in a district and a school that I won't name. Just because. <laughs> so my son, well, actually, let me go back. So when my son turned two, we took him to his pediatrician. They gave him, we had to fill out this 20 questionnaire, qu question, questionnaire, whatever. And there was a few things on there like, can he say 150 words? And it was like, no. And there were like some other questions like that. And we got referred by our pediatrician to a place called Easter Seals. And what they do is they do early childhood intervention. When they're not at, when, when you, it's either a, a pediatrician will catch it, or if you feel like your son or daughter is not developing like they should, then you, you could take them there. And they'll, they'll evaluate them, right? So when we did that program, they said that he, you know, he had a speech delay. And so we had a, a speech therapist come every Friday. And she, she was a wonderful woman. And she worked with me and worked with him. And, you know, he started talking and all of that stuff, but I think a lot of it was that because I was working, going to school, so he was there with grandma, and grandma would do everything. He didn't have to, like, he didn't have to think about, oh, hey, let me ask for that, I'm going to do that. And the other thing was, is he, he would, re he could respond to me, you know, he may not have always said something, but he understood what I was telling him, but he just didn't want to speak. So we did that for about, I think about a year, year or so, till he was three. And then once we were, do, were done with that, they transferred us to the district that I won't name. And we had to take him to this elementary school. Now he wasn't going to go there because that wasn't in his, that wasn't in our range, but that's where they were going to evaluate him. So they had, they had a pathologist. They, I think they had a psychiatrist. A couple other people were there and they evaluated him again. So they gave him a set of toys. He lined them up. And that's what he always did with his toys. He loved to line them up. And if you moved them, oh boy, he, he would, you know, he, he'd, get a, he'd get really mad, mm -hmm. you know. He liked things a certain way. That's how his mother is. <clears throat> well, so during the assessment, we have one lady asking us like a few questions. And the other lady's working with them. She moved the toy, and he would respond. Then he held on to one toy while he was messing with the other toy. He didn't want to, he didn't want to let it go. And I, I, it felt like an eternity, but I'm pretty sure it was like 10, 15 minutes. And we sat there, and they tell us, well, we think he has autism. And they, 
they also said we think he has a low IQ. Yeah. And so <laughs> they tell us that, and then they refer us to another center where he can get evaluated even more. And this was an autism center to where, um, where they specialized in this stuff. So we left there, get in the car, she's crying, she's upset. And I, I just didn't buy it because they didn't, they, they didn't know him, you know? So I, I decided, I was like, you know what? I really enjoyed working with him and getting him to start reading and start talking and start asking to do things. So I said, you know what? I'm, I'm going to do that and I'm going to do, spe- I'm gonna do special ed. That's pretty much it. And, and you know, as, as I've been going through this program, I look back on how they evaluated him, and there was, there was a lot of things they didn't do right, I, I, in my opinion. But, and you know him. Yeah. Does he seem like he has a low IQ? No. He's very, <laughs> he's quite curious. Yeah. Quite curious of the world around him. I think, honestly, I think he just wants to do things when he, when he wants to do them. He does things on his own terms. He does. <laughs> and I think that's what it was. And I think it was that coupled with grandma just doing everything for him. Do everything for him. I'm like, no, he needs to learn to be independent. It's a constant battle. Nobody disciplines him. I discipline him. It's a... And then, then, then they want to give me pointers on how I'm like, well, why don't you? Why don't you do that? <laughs> and he and he tests their limits. It's funny. Well, it's a brave new world where parenting <laughs> is a different level compared to what we were parenting. Oh, on. seriously, I, I totally agree. Um, I do the exact opposite That's of right. what I've been through. Yeah, and and I don't always get it right. And I think through the six years, I think that. Even though, you know, I've, I know I don't do everything right all the time. I think I, at least I sit there and I try to make the best decision at the time. That's but, the best we can, anybody can do. And so with that and during this program, I, I've been thinking about, a, a lot of professors make you think about going back to grade school. And there was a lot of things that that could have been done with with some of the the, the kids, some of the kids, some like me, you know, because I I lived in a home where it was just constant arguing, constantly yelling, always a hostile environment. I never wanted to be home, and my mom worked nights. And my stepfather, I don't know, well, <laughs> he did his thing at night, mm-hmm. and I was stuck with, I was stuck with three kids. Babysitting. Babysitting. Or Trying parenting. To, parenting, yeah. How old? I was like from 12, 13, 14, <laughs> it's like, until my mom stopped working nights. And then she found out what was going on. And Well, actually, I didn't tell her. Actually, I told her not, not too long ago. I told her a few years ago. She was like, why did you ever tell me? I was like, for what? More you argument. Were, you were struggling. You, you were doing everything you could to just, you know, take care of us. But, and it, I mean, it's, it wasn't all on him either. I mean, but there's so many kids that go through things. And... They don't know. A lot of these teachers don't know. And I and I met a lot of teachers and they come from different backgrounds. And it's like and they'll say things about the children and I'm like, but you don't even know. You don't. And they say, Well well, why can't they just do for themselves or 
why why does it have to be this way and it's like but but you don't even know how how that goes because they're telling me like oh yeah my dad still does this for me or I, <laughs> I was still living with my parents or I didn't have to work when I was in college it's not easy no and kids have different lives they grow up in so and I understand that so I want to change that I don't think I will I don't think I'll make the impact that you know you set you set those uh, Greg standards you know what, what are the Greg standards the Greg standards man what would be the Greg standard to yeah, teach you it's every it's Australia see it's Australia I'll, I'll be lucky to get to to uh, what? what what are you talking about Australia <laughs> I'm here I'm here I'm on for, I'm <laughs> You, Not unfortunate, but you, I'm just you here. Know, you're here. It wasn't your decision. Oh, kind of was, but it wasn't my decision to stay. Kind of COVID kind of messed that up. No, I know. But COVID's messed up everything. I can't even get. See, I grew up in a generation where we learn by lecture, and I'm basically teaching myself. And I don't, I, I don't like that. Well, I can't, don't. I can't. Um, it, I, it's been so difficult to learn like this this last couple of years. What to learn on your feet? To learn on my own. It's like reading. I have to read, and then I mean, if you get, you get, I get so much from hearing somebody tell me something. You know, I, I can, I can mimic something somebody does. Don't listen to me. Like I just I just mimic a bunch of stuff I've read in books. <laughs> it's it's really just a bunch of nonsense. What if you read it all? But to bring you back to becoming a teacher, your decisions, your son, teaching your son, being one of them, and seeing how so many other children probably don't get a good education because they're sterilized mm. or prejudged well it depends you know because it's not it's not the same everywhere no as it, in what it, like the type of education cuz each state does its own thing. Each school, each and, individual well, school within a district That's does was, its own. And I was, I was going to break <laughs> it down, too. No, no, I was going to break it down to that. But first of all, you have every, you have every state that does it different. You have um, every school district that does it different. Every individual school. It's, different. it's, like, it's like managing a, a sports team. You have some good GMs. You got some really bad GMs. <laughs> really? <laughs> is that how you want to break it down? <laughs> school is bad. A, are you going to tell me school is not a business? It it it's, it's run sad like, it's run it, like a business. It's sad when it's run with athletics leading the forefront. Exactly. That's how they, that that's how they when you're at a, allocating money to where where it's supposed to go, like you have these small counties that are like sports varsity blues type counties. Oh yeah, and and they invest nothing but in the athletics. Where where are all, where, where what are we supposed to do? Because we breed for the NFL. We breed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you but you're laughing like you were laughing at me earlier. Like this is running like a business. It's terrible. It's terrible what they do. It's run like a prison business. It is. The. T- I don't know. I don't see the point in taking attendance every single class. Oh, that's how they get their funding. It's ridiculous. They should get a funding in a different way. Well, it's more bodies that are at 98.5 degrees. It's more. It's the funding they get. And what is dictated by that? Well, you have the state, the government funding. You have to, I guess you have to have a certain amount of kids in school in that particular school. So how are they getting away with it now with the pandemic, with 
kids being at home. Well, you you attend the class, you're 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 counted there. Dude, tell me why are schools closing? That that should not ever happen. Oh, because the money is being diverted to other charter schools. Which maybe they offer something more than with public schools. What is that saying do about they? the public education? Do they though? I don't know. Yeah. I don't attend their schools. I would assume the parents that take their kids there don't just sign a dotted line. It's because they learn what they want them to learn, what they're paying those, what they're paying those schools to, for them to learn. So they they get the type of education they want. See, a public school, that's, it's whoever is sitting on a chair and making these decisions. Most, most of the time, it's not even people who even have a background in education. Well, I think a lot of changes should be made, but I'm just one person. Oh, and I absolutely agree. It's a, it's a ridiculous system. I have teachers who tell me, like, they go so far beyond when the kid doesn't want to do anything. I, I know you're starting to see that, too. Mm-hmm. Well, I see all it's the ridiculous. kids that don't want to be there and don't want to do anything. They just sit there. Right. What can you do? And the parents are advocating this because they don't have the time to sit there and see what's going on. Is it? Or are they just... Or they just they blindly just, trust their kids. They just see high school as a waste of time. The parent or the kid? Both. Because I'm going to say something really messed up. Do it. <laughs> Do it. I, I would rather him be at school because then it gives us time to do things. You know, he's he's somewhere where, you know, I, I know he's not gonna. But I mean, he's he's only six. What if, like, what what, what, if, what trouble could he get in? Right. Yeah, but, but when he's older, or anybody that when they're older, instead of being like in European countries and some South, I believe, other parts of the world. Probably South America, um, where they only attend school up until they're 16 years old, 16, 17. But where do they go after that? Anywhere. Or they don't have to go anywhere. It's their choice. Or they can just go work. But see, where where does... Uh... Why are you going to force people to go to school that don't want to be there, that don't want to learn? You're just feeding the system, feeding the business. You need to change that. It makes sense because, I mean, it's like, you know, when things get bad, you know, they'll they'll bail out these big companies and stuff like that. But then when the budget's tight, oh, let's cut education. <laughs> and when you do that, the, that's how I, you see the, the disproportions in, in the different schools and the different communities. And, and then you have teachers who, who who don't care. They they are in it for the wrong reasons. I haven't I haven't met any of those, but oh, sorry, you <laughs> give, have. Give it time. Give it time. All my life, I've seen that. Of course, and and I grew up. I grew up in a community, a plight community. What what community? In what community? What community? Well, I grew up. I mean, I have nothing against the district, to, but there was. It was, there were some employers when I was in grade school who they just not, did not care. They did not care to encourage us. They they even said, you know, I get paid whether or not. Like, what? And I heard that a lot through through the years of grade school. Do you think that mentality? And I heard that in other districts too, but. You think that mentality is being passed along? I'm just here. I'm just here. Because I have to be. Just like, I'll just do this work, but I won't put any pride into this work. Just, I'll do the work just to get it done. No quality, no effort. But see, why can't they think like that? Like what? 
Like, just do the work and get out of there. But they... Who knows? Because... I know some I know some kids that um I'll rephrase this if I was one of these kids right now and I was stuck at home from a pandemic I would just do the work and then you have the rest of the day to do whatever to what, do whatever you want and they can't even do that it's pretty sad. Yeah. And then you see the ones that don't want to be there. And they act up. And it's not even... You know what? It's not that they don't want to be there. It's... it's They're forced to... They feel like they're forced to be there. Mm-hmm. And... I've been that young kid. There was times I didn't want to go to school. I had to deal with home. And I had to come to school and be told this and this and this and and feel discouraged. So it's like I didn't feel I didn't feel comfortable anywhere. And then even at school I had kids who always picked on me. I I didn't want to be I didn't want to be anywhere. I didn't want to be home, didn't want to be at school. I I I just skateboarded and I just try to stay away from bad things. Because, you know, I as a kid, that's one thing I didn't understand. The kids who would get into stuff, get into gangs, get into that. And I used to get ridiculed for that. Because I would ask them, why? Why do you waste your time? That's, you're going to fight over a color that you're wearing. And I'm, you know, I'm... Sitting here, a teenager, with these other teenagers, he's, you know, and they're yeah. looking at me like, what are you talking about? And they're taking it as a threat when it's like, no, I'm making you try to think about what you're doing. I'm trying to understand why you're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> it makes no sense. Why would you get in trouble? Why do you, why do you think it's okay to, to evade cops and to do things and... Dude, there was a school I went to where there was it was it was a middle school and kids would sell drugs. And I'm talking about not just weed, like cocaine, what? heroin, yeah. That's all I'm saying. I'm like, how did you even get a hold of this? Is middle school like the new high school? Yeah. Well, no. This was when I was oh, in went... middle school. Really? Yes. Wow. This was when I was in middle school. Man, I was probably so blind as a little kid. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, like where I lived, it was crazy. The kids were in gangs. I didn't care for any of that. I had, what did I have? I had skateboarding, The Simpsons. <laughs> Never wanted to miss the Simpsons. Where did skateboarding take you? Where did skateboard skateboarding take me? Yeah, where did it take you? Like where around the city? Where? Well, I lived pretty close to downtown, so I would take a bus. It would take me about five minutes. Or if I really wanted to get a workout, I well, I would skate all the way downtown. It wasn't that far. Uh, just go around, skateboard, stay out of trouble. I'd rather have done, I'd rather fall and look stupid than to be getting on drugs and going around gangbanging and doing all that stuff. I just that's just that was just me. I just I didn't understand it. It made no sense because it felt if it's like where does it lead? It doesn't lead anywhere. I mean, neither did skateboarding. But hey. It, <laughs> The most I would get, what, a, a citation <laughs> for skateboarding where I'm not supposed to? What? Skateboarding builds confidence. Builds personality. Builds courage. Oh, yeah, definitely build courage. Get on that skateboard into, like, 
take on all the elements that come your way. A little that, bump in the road. All that skateboard hitting the shins. What were we talking about? You becoming a teacher. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, it's um, all good. What, from all these things that you told me, what are the important lessons you've learned from this? What has it taught you? We're talking about teaching, right? Mm-hmm. So... One professor, shout out to Dr. Porter, Thomas Porter. Guy was, I, I, that guy's a genius, man. Love, I love that guy. He's awesome. Um, he emphasized in his course was to um, extract what the kids know. Like he broke it down. You let you give the kids a chance to tell you what they know. And that way, you can fill in all of the, the missing spots from there. Or you can shape your lesson plan around there. Um, he was always stressing, like, don't ever underestimate kids. They're, they're unlimited potential. They're on bound unlimited potential. They can be whatever they want to be. You just shouldn't like dismotivate that or or stop them. Like even even when a kid just keeps coming up asking me for a paper, I'm like, What'd you do with the last one? It's like filled up with like a bunch of drawings. I'm like, Oh, okay. Keep doing that. Yeah. Not yeah. not like was that was what was that what you were supposed to be doing? Like, See, like I don't want to be that teacher. I don't. That's like a dinosaur teacher. Cause why why do that to yourself? There's still teachers like that. Cause I'm sure. I'm sure there is. There are teachers there, everywhere. I'm sure they're every. I'm they're, sure there's they're teachers. Not, they're not in it for the kids. This is not a job where you say, "Oh, I could just step into this and, you know." No, you have to be heart and soul into this. Yeah. This is this is a kid's life. This is this is gonna follow them. I remember those teachers. I remember the good ones too. John Jay, Steve Kerr, Frank Kerr, Frank Kerr, <laughs> Frank Kerr, U.S. History Honors. He let us, we were, we were talking about Prohibition, and he let us watch The Untouchables until somebody told on him, and then we couldn't watch it. Really? Yeah. But he actually tied in everything that we were learning about prohibition and he tied it in with that movie like i never knew like i we all know prohibition right mm -hmm. okay well i didn't know capone was getting liquor from canada i didn't know that he i never knew that he went to prison for for tax evasion yeah they could never get him on murder yeah or or the alcohol. Uh, <laughs> they could just got them on tax. Yeah. It's like you didn't pay your taxes? Damn, bro. <laughs> the one the one thing I forgot to do slipped my mind. Get away with murder, but if you don't pay your taxes, damn. Hey, he couldn't <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't he couldn't murder the tax assessors. <laughs> he <laughs> slipped his mind. <laughs> okay, but no, getting back to 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 learning about what I learned. I mean, um, always set high expectations. Set high expectations for the kids, no matter what. No matter if they have a disability or not, you always set high expectations. Yeah. What opportunities are you looking forward to with those high expectations? I want I want to do 
what I helped do with Hinton. Now, oh, that, will that work with every child? No, but... But there's, there's always a way to get a kid to learn something. You just have to know what you can relate to it or or find you find their their strengths and that's just what I want to do your heart's in the right place for it but are you ready to be broken down when you get into it I don't know I don't know, man, because my father-in-law, you know, he's he teaches too. He's a he's a coach, but he has built strong relationships with those kids, and those kids confide in him, and they tell him things, and then things will happen, and he comes, he comes up, he comes over, and he tells us stories. Just terrible stories. Like he, he told me one story the other day where <laughs> this kid was dropped off, right? And he was talking to him. He's hey, how's it, how's it going? Blah 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 blah. And he's like, oh, I'm not feeling too good. And he said, so the kid told him. Um, well, my family's getting, my parents are getting divorced. And he told him that his father said to him that he wanted to do nothing. He wanted nothing to do with him. Wow. And that he didn't love him. Another thing, <laughs> another thing I can relate to. When, so my stepfather was with my mother for like 15 years. I grew up with this guy. He, I'll give you all, I'll give you all the positives I can give you for, for him. He didn't drink, he didn't do drugs. He, he worked his ass off. And from a, from a financial standpoint, he, 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 he took care of us. He did. But, he he was always yelling. He 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 treated me <laughs> like every time we would do something like a project. It it was always like I should know this or first time and I'll never forget this. I was I was like five or six, and we just moved into this house. So they they got a house together. And he wanted to put some type of rock in the backyard, kind of like some kind of landscaping thing, right? So he gave me an instruction to do. And it was something about moving rocks over there, and I didn't, I didn't catch all of it. So when he came back, and mind you, this is like, I've known him for a little bit. How old are you during this time? I was like five or six. Wow. So much yeah. expectation. So mind you, I'm like, okay, moving in with this guy. All right. And the first thing he says to me, it's like, are you fucking stupid? Did you not, did you not uh, understand what I told you? And I remember that feeling. It was... It's a terrible feeling, like uh, you know. I, did, I I guess it's like kind of like a anxious feeling. I feel it now, just telling the story. But and from then on in, I just I knew it was gonna be like that. When we got grass planted in, he said, "Water the grass." And like I understand now, like you're supposed to soak it, so it attach to the ground, right? So mm, it holds yeah. together, right? Something like that. <laughs> he 
came home and he was like, what the fuck? <laughs> you didn't do, you didn't do this shit, right? Like, you said to water the grass. I, I don't, I didn't know you meant to flood the grass. <laughs> I don't fucking know these things. <laughs> And especially, if, especially a kid. Yeah. A, kid, a little kid. Yeah. What would a little kid know? So, you know, and then, yeah, there was times where I acted out in school and just to piss them off. <laughs> Damn, man. But then I would get in trouble anyway, so it didn't matter. It's like, either way, I'm in trouble. I don't know, man. It's That's why, I like, what I was saying earlier, like, I just... I do the opposite of everything that I've been taught, or everything that I've seen. It's a good step forward. Yeah, it's sometimes. Yeah, you know, sometimes I get, I get, I get a little frustrated with him. I'm like, like with the shirt, <laughs> it fucking kills me. I t I've taught him for the last couple of years. I've taught him to put his shirt on. Mm -hmm. And I always say, look for the tag. And I can ask him the question. And he'll, he'll, he'll say, okay, yeah, look for the tag. And then put it on. <laughs> so we've, we've gone through this, right? And, you know, in some mornings he just, there was a whole week where he just was not doing it. <laughs> and then he, that dude, he got to, like, we got, I gave him a collared shirt and I wanted to see how he would do this. So I gave him a collared shirt. And he still put it on backwards. And I'm like, is that how you're supposed to look? It's like, <laughs> the way I like it. He knew. It's the way he I knew. want it. And, and he would always know because like, or like he would do his underwear backwards. And you always knew because he would be like grabbing at his ass. And I'm like, hey, you feel all uncomfortable there? <laughs> and he's like, oh, and I was like, you, you, you want to you wanna guess what it might be? <laughs> he just looks at me. But I've, you know, I've never, I've never spanked him. I've never put my hands on him. Never. That was one of the things. Never put my hands on him. I've never spanked him, never nothing. And he does just fine. He's a very good kid. I'm I'm very fortunate. Well, we're fortunate to have him. Because he has a lot of friends. <laughs> he has a lot of friends. And it's like, man, we're lucky to have him. When he grows up and goes to university, how do you think he's going to be? I don't know. He's very, he, he has a big head, like, he, he, he sometimes thinks he's the shit. <laughs> it's funny, so, I, I go back to education, um, so, when he was, so he was diagnosed with the, so when we transferred him to, mm -hmm. to the elementary he was at, he's been at, um, it was for the speech therapy. So we just totally ignored the autism thing. And, and when he went to elementary, we still gave him services for the speech. So um, in this past December, he, 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 was, he tested out. That's great. So we had this whole Zoom meeting the teacher and his current teacher, his past teacher and his current teacher, and they kept giving us the credit. And it was like, no, I think you guys put in a lot of work. And they were like, no, I mean, we can tell that you talk to him, you communicate with him because of how well-spoken he is. And the things he comes up with, you know. Um, the psychologist there was saying, whatever he does in life, he's going to be successful. Now, 
<laughs> that is amazing and terrifying at the same fucking time. Because, like, what is he going to do? <laughs> is he going to be a master criminal? Like, <laughs> Always with the negative. It's not negative. Go with the positive. You never know. <laughs> but it's like, hey, as long as he's successful, right? Fuck it. <laughs> Sounds like it's acceptable in society. Yeah. Like, what was it? Pablo Escobar's father hated him. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted nothing to do with him. And he was richer than probably everyone in this damn country at the time. Mm. Crazy. There's one thing. So what I picked him up, and this is an example of his mind and how it works. So he hates in math class. Um, he hates in math class when kids interrupt because they take away recess time. So the other the other day I'm picking him up, and the the principal of the school. I mean, this is a great school. The support there is awesome. Principals out there putting kids in cars. Have you ever see that? It's amazing. Um. So she brings him to the car, and she's like, and I see them talking. I'm like, oh, man, what's he telling her? What's he telling her, right? So he gets in the car, and, she's, and she tells me, he's going to make a great vice principal one day. So, so apparently the VPs are the ones in charge of discipline. So he was giving her ideas about how to discipline the kids in his classroom <laughs> because they keep interrupting math and taking away his second recess time. Yeah. That's that's the kind of that's, that's the kind of stuff that he that's hilarious. yeah. But uh, that's that's pretty much everything, education wise. I probably didn't say a whole, whole lot of nothing, but oh, go ahead, pour your water. That way, it's just less noise, less stuff to have to deal with, easier to edit out. Gotta get some alkaline water, man. <laughs> okay, Felicia. <laughs> no, I saw the price. Like, I pay seven dollars for it, that five gallon I have. Is it the one off of Bandera? No, no, no. It's off of uh, Callahan. Because there's a few places off of Bandera. They sell that, and we have the jug for it, but. And it was all Felicia's idea, of course, to buy alkaline water. You want to know what that jar is used for now? That that tub? What? It's Hinton's piggy bank. Wow. And there's there's a lot of money in there. Because <laughs> <laughs> grandpa and grandpa, grandpa and grandma bring him money all the damn time. Oh shit! Crazy man. You ready to jump on? Yeah. To topic. Yeah, let's get on topic. I'm sorry. We're just. No worries. Going on tangent. Oh, I guess that's why they have editing, right? No, you're talking about your son. You're talking about the reason why you got into teaching. But now, how do you feel about universities now that you're almost done with yours? Do you think? I hate the department I'm in. No, uh, but what about the program in general? Like, not in regards. You mean the whole overall experience? Yeah, the overall experience. UTSA is fun, even when you're busy. You could still go outside and enjoy festivities. They always had free food. I always took advantage of getting free shirts. Um, I think it was a good quality of professors I had. There were, there, were, there were some that were just like, you know, you could tell they have their own views on the world and they try to like embed it in you and very pessimistic people and it's like but most of that is like it's a reflection on their life and you can tell like I've, I'd never had a professor where they were like I hate it here like they came in and they just hated their job um I guess the quality of education I mean, I was, I'm in an education program. 
some of the courses, there were, I'll just say they were easy, but not useful. Towards what? Towards teaching? Yeah. Because it's all based on a perfect situation. And these professors who have taught in grade school and have actually been principals in, in schools, they know damn well that's not how it works. And for them to try to tell us that, other than the truth of how it really works, I think it's... Uh, It's a disservice to us. How about in general, <clears throat> in general for everything in university? I, I'm not talking about any specific university, but just the university experience in general. It just teaches you, teaches their system, right. their guidelines. doesn't necessarily teach you real world experience, what you're actually going to face out there in the real world. Well, um, you can say that about many jobs, not not just teaching, though. You can go to a trade school, and they don't teach you every situation out there. Just they teach you the basics. They teach you basics. And so you need in a trade. And from there, see, you use critical thinking okay. to build off your basics. Okay, but if you want to go to a trade school, that's cool. I have nothing against it, but you know. When you have like programs that are like, do we need everyone to be uh, a mechanic? Or, I mean, it's just your preference where you want to go. Depends on society, it depends on what society needs. Well, and but see, here we go again with education, and you have certain states that are invested in different, like here, we have we used to have aviation. Remember that? Like when Kelly Air Force Base was open? That yeah. was the place to work. Now we got robotics there. <laughs> <laughs> I, you're telling me you could get a certification in robotics? Are, are you sure? I, I, I'm pretty sure no, you have no, to no, go no, to a no, university. No. Well, uh, who knows? At least some kind of, or like a, what is it? You're specialist in that. But no, that, that's just different. That's just off topic. I mean, I really don't have anything against. I, I mean, there's. It just depends on what you want to do, what you want to do in life. I mean, should you bring that do down you, to a younger age though? Instead of eighteen, should you bring that down to a younger age? Since some kids are. <laughs> how how young are we talking? Are you going back to in Europe when sixteen year olds? You you can leave school and and do all of that. Like if you want to change your mind, you can go to trade school or you finish out the school. It depends. Maybe you don't have to necessarily they drop out completely, but you're leaving them option. Oh, you can attend other options. You don't have to just steadily cruise towards graduation. You can jump to an acceleration program where you can actually start learning what you want to learn. Start learning the crafts that you need to learn at a younger age instead of wasting time. But then you also said, too, like some kids are just going to do what they're going to do. Some kids might do nothing. But and that's their choice. But see, to answer that question, we have to, as a society, have to decide like what, what is the age, what do, what do we establish as the age of where you can make certain decisions cuz let me ask you this do you know how many states no hold on let me let me phrase this correctly how many states what do you do you know all the states and the age of consent oh they're wild okay. some of them have wild ages they're so like 14 13 years old no not not even the i'll, I'll give you the minimum 
So, answer me this. Do you know how many states have a consent age? The minimum age is 16. Do you know how many states have, have that law? Well, majority, probably what? 30 states. And the rest of the other states? 17 and 18. So you're telling me you have, you have 30 states that say, oh, you can have, you can have sex at 16. Whoa, so you're whoa, able to whoa, work. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're, you're talking about two different things. No, but hold on. I'm getting to the point. So you you're, you're, you're have the capability of having sex at, at 16. Uh-huh. The federal minimum age to work is 15. And then some states have 17 and 18. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know where, where, where you go with that. Like, do you, there should, there should be some type of age limit where, we, where you can do everything. What do you mean by everything? Well, like you said, you, you said, where, what, about leaving school? leaving grade school to go do some trade work. I'm just saying, like, we can't even establish what kids can do or what teenagers can do at what age. We can't even agree on that. I know. Why, why waste time agreeing? Just let them do. Okay, but where do you set the minimum? Because... Why you set a minimum? Well, because, okay, you're saying someone can have sex at 16... So you're saying they have the mental capability of making that decision, but what if they don't know what they want to do with their lives? A lot of people don't know what they want to do with their lives. You have to teach people, you have to learn a trade or a skill, you have to be vulnerable. Not vulnerable. But should we... Valuable. You need to be valuable to the community and to those around you. That's what we should build and teach, not tell them oh you need to decide what you're going to do for your whole life no no like, you, there's, you there's, ask there's you gotta ask be a any, point you though. ask anybody that what you want to do for your whole life even people our age and older be like i don't know just doing this well yeah i'm, I'm one of them because i've had several jobs as a matter of fact this this area right here uh back in 09 I, I was a garbage man, and this was my old route. Oh. That's why I, I didn't have a problem finding this place. <laughs> like, I recognized the street name and everything. Uh. But, yeah, you know, as a kid, I was like, okay, I want to be a detective. I wanted to be a homicide detective. But I never told anybody that. And then, I don't know. A lot of a lot of the way I felt discouraged. You know where a lot of that discouragement came from? Being in school. <laughs> Why? Cause teachers would tell you like you're never gonna do nothing or like you're never gonna be nothing. And it's like, why are you yelling at all of us? There's only one kid pissing you off. And you're yelling at all of us, you're telling us all of this? Well, unfortunately teachers are human beings and Human beings have a hard time controlling their attitudes. That's why I told you that it, it, you're, you have to be a special breed to be a teacher. You can't just be like, "Oh, I'll just hop into this." And this is a good, this is a good range where I want to get a, a good salary here. Yeah, because you, you you don't you're insane. You, you don't make <laughs> it doesn't do it justice. It looks good. The the pay looks good on paper for like the amount of time you maybe put in in a university, but it's it's not it's not at all. Things wildly insane. How much I see teachers overworking on like working on weekends? Dude, what? Dave, there's studies like I've done research papers where I found studies where the first three years like ridiculous, like almost fifty percent of teachers will quit. They call it teacher burnout because they weren't prepared. 
They were prepared, but they weren't prepared. The, the in-school observations, they're, they're nice, but I have to ask those questions. I have to ask those tough questions. What is it really like? And I tell them, you know, don't feel, don't sugarcoat it. I, you're not going to chase me away from all, all the things that I've been through in my life. Like, that's not going to, from being a garbage man. And, and <laughs> I, was a landscaper. I can, I can hand. Oh, I've done landscaping too. <laughs> man. I teacher. I mean, yeah, it's a whole different world. But you know, I would always ask them, give it to me straight. How does your school function here? What type of support do you have? What am I looking forward to? And some of them will tell you. They'll say like. There's, like, sh there was one teacher who told me when she first arrived, like, the thing to do is to, you help, you help the teacher, you help them, you give them, you show them lesson plans, and, you know, you kind of get them set. Yeah. She said they didn't do that for her. And it's like, and we're, we're taught in the university, like, you are supposed to collaborate with everyone as a team. This is a team effort. But you have those people who, who don't want to be on a team. They don't they want to do their own thing. Cause they just don't trust anybody. They don't. Well, that's why you have to teach to the curriculum, no? Yeah, you can, but when you have someone that's just coming in off the presses, you know. They, yeah, you've been taught to do something. But you would think, because it's a generational thing. So you would think, hey, let me give, let me give the new person some guidance. Let me help them. And um, I've, I've had teachers tell me, too, that they've, they've had support when they first come in. And then there's some that don't get support. And they're left to their own. And the curriculum is only a, a piece of that puzzle. Because you have to get, you have to grab that. And then you have to figure out how you're going to execute it. And that requires you building relationships with those kids. And understanding how they learn. And they all don't learn the same. So it's it's a it's a process. Given that process, given the curriculum that's mandated by the state, do you think that should change? Do you think it would change in any way the educational sh system if it was managed more locally instead of by dictated by the state? Well, I mean. It's it it's kind of dictated by all three, but the ultimate if you're a public school, the ultimate person you answer to is is the, the the state and the federal government. And these are guys again. These are guys that are just sitting in these chairs, no background. They're politicians. So should it be brought down locally? But if you bring it down locally, it. It's it's too big of a thing to just have it a local thing. Because when you have a local thing, then you have stuff like Varsity Blues like we were talking about earlier. Well, why don't you just have their districts specialize like the charter schools do? Because they're public schools. They have to follow federal guidelines. So you're, you're, yeah, there's, you're, there's federal guidelines and then there's state guidelines. Then who's going to fund these schools? Because... There's, there, there's communities that they can't afford these. They can't afford schools like that. But yet there's schools closing. 
Exactly. But the schools that are, <laughs> it, it's the politicians. They cut the education. Or you have, you set these, these, uh, you set these mandates where, okay, well, their, their test scores are not looking good. So we're going to pull funding. Like what, what, what in any way does that make sense? Doesn't How is that going to incentivize conspiracy in my head about the state government and education? How the politicians have kept the education bars, like the education level, so oh, low? It's not a conspiracy. Read, just, just, read, read the mandates. Uh, uh, not too long ago, they, they redid what? the laws in this state. Literally, verbatim, in the damn bill, it says they want to keep kids from thinking critically. It's in the damn bill. I don't know why. I, they, they talk about, what did the kids say? It, they flexed. The, that's a flex, bro. When you put something in there like that where you say you don't want kids thinking critically... That's a problem. I'll tell you why. It happened in February. So that way they can get away with putting in the minimum oh, and no, getting this, maximum effort No, out. this was before COVID. Yeah, no, I, I know. I'm just telling you. Oh. What happened in February is just like the tip of the iceberg of infrastructure problems throughout this state. Like It might kind of makes you think, like, what are they spending the money on, right? Well. Because we're, what? When, we when, gotta be at least five years behind on on our roads. We keep building these highways, and then we're, there's still traffic. And what what's their solution? Oh, let's expand build the highway. A, yeah, expand the highway. Let's, make bu- it, let's build a toll road. <laughs> make another lane. Make the highway wider. Sixteen highways. It's funny. You make a toll road like but in then, San Antonio. <laughs> but but then you mentioned the the idea of. Building a metro, a train, going through the city. So like, oh, you're crazy. I'm like, why? Why am I crazy? There's already train tracks going through the city. There's already like commercial trains going through the city like halls. But those were established long, long time ago. Yeah, you know they used to ride people too. Still do mm-hmm. from other cities. I don't understand why. Not not the city, but the residents that live on that alignment mm-hmm. are not like, oh, I want to improve this. Instead of just getting ass raped by the train company every time the train just goes up and down, what do they get out of it? Aren't they dying too? What? The train companies? Why? Why would they be dying? There's other methods of sending goods. Fuel's expensive. Airlines... Costs money. Don't even give me that. <laughs> don't don't but talk about airlines. I'm talking and... about building. When you build a metro, you you establish a lot of things. You establish job creation. You establish skills being brought in, and that in, in turn like changes the whole entire like society. Mm-hmm. But what do we see? Right now, during this pandemic, we see a lot of these smaller businesses dying, and you see a lot of these big businesses booming. That's because of one. That's they're the ones writing the laws, bro. They're the ones dictating this. You want to know why we don't have this and that? It's because of them. They, they don't want that. Why haven't we had <laughs> infrastructure in this damn country? For mean, so long, what? We're supposed, why? Why is it so hard to do that? We we aid other countries that I probably don't even know all of them. I I definitely don't know all of them, but we we send these countries millions and hundreds of millions of dollars, but yet we cannot fix things here because it's, it's that's the way. Yeah, it is very embarrassing, but that's the way people are. They don't believe in upgrading society. They just want to live in the era that was already built instead of building a new one. Things get old. 
But what are we going to do when these things start? Because everything breaks down eventually. What are you going to do with a coal power plant that only produces so much energy and you have a growing population that is going to outgrow a coal, coal burning power plant? What are you going to do with that? You're going to build another coal power plant? You're going to expand that one? Or are you going to change up to a more expensive, more reliable energy? Probably not. Because the city's cheap and there's a lot of thugs around here that like to take money from other people's pockets. Dude, I can give you a, a micro example of that. What? I pay an HOA <laughs> and I have <laughs> I have shitty streets. That I drive through every day, along with these speed bumps. All of those speed bumps. They re- they repair them. They've replaced them, like, twice. And you're telling me you can't fill in these potholes in, the, in that community that we, we pay to live in? You can't call... The, the president of, the, of the, these HOAs can't call a councilman to get these things done? That's ridiculous. HOAs in general, I I don't like, but that's just me. I don't get them. I don't. I, I see them as a waste of money. It, it 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 seems like they're just like a neighborhood police because they will send you. Oh, your uh, your grass is too high. You need to cut it. It may look bad for the community. Well, <laughs> we have terrible roads <laughs> that are constantly messing up our cars. But let's not talk about that. Let's worry about my grass that I can easily go out there and cut any time. Let's not talk about the roads in our neighborhood. Or neighborhoods that don't even have sidewalks with the roads. Exactly. It's crazy. There's forgotten neighborhoods in the city that don't even have sidewalks. Yeah. What what do you think like the city or even the region should like invest in? Because what I feel like a lot of people forget is yeah, we we keep to our own lives. We live our own lives. But then unless you're living out in the middle of nowhere with your own ranch, with your own grid, your own community you're part of a community living in a city living in a town like you're paying into a system i don't understand why people been paying overpaying into a system and then it craps out the moment everyone needs it Mm -hmm. that's why i say like what kind of investment should like this a city a community like build towards because that's what an investment is is building towards something this could be they they should they should build these (laughs) fix these damn roads man they gotta fix the roads that's it no there's a lot of things. They got to But these are things these are things they can't profit off of. Like what I you know what I want to do one day? I want to go back to my old neighborhood and I want to build some kind of like rec center. And I want to give out free things. I want I want to encourage kids to find what they what they want to do in life. Because even the ones that you've seen and the ones that I've seen and the ones from back then when they sit there and they're like, well, I don't want to do this. But every kid has some type of dream. Good or bad. Every kid wants to do something at one point. 
but they don't have that support system. And where does it all lead to? What is the main problem? <laughs> Are we, are we just going to keep educating kids or do we try to educate parents? But do they want to be educated? Do you, I mean, I certainly don't want people telling me how to parent. I'm not saying to parent. I'm but, saying how to, you're right. how to encourage you're enthusiasm, right. but, how but to then, encourage creativity, how to encourage their dreams. But then there's... I, and I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that because there are parents who struggle. Some parents are doing it alone. Some parents we all struggle. Work. We all go through a different end. struggle. Exactly. We all have a. We all have different problems, and that's. But that's a that's a huge thing. But that's why I want something like that, because that helps. That that, and and at the same time, you're creating a connection. With the community and everyone's involved. High expectations, sir. Exactly. I like it. Because, like I said before, man, I'm a parent, but I don't have all the answers. You know, I I get no sleep at night. Why? Because I always, I always think about like, am I doing a good job? What do I need to do with a pre- with all kinds of other things on my mind? But right. ever since I've been a parent, dude, it's... You only got to deliver the world. <laughs> it's no big deal. Just deliver the world, add a little moon to it. Nah, man. Boom. You know what he gets? He gets, he gets, a, he gets to have that house <laughs> after high school <laughs> if he decides to go to a college here. If he wants to go to a trade school... <laughs> I'm probably <laughs> going to have to fight. Send him to Australia, man. I'm probably going to have to fight her for it. Send him to Australia. She's not going to like it, but I mean, whatever he does, I want to encourage him. And like you said, even if he changes his mind a million times, we all do. I just, she, I, I don't know. Is it? Let me ask you this: Is it? Would it be? Is it harmful? To have kids grow up and just live with you forever, because I've I've seen, I've I've seen where like probably there's some people probably and we'll it's say yes. and and it's like well like what are you doing like you're just here <laughs> they're stuck in the well like, stuck in Noah's well. See, and I think about that, and I'm like, okay, I'm not that lost. I'm thankful for that. <laughs> but before Hinton, I, I didn't know what the hell I wanted to do. I was, I was working insurance. I was doing insurance Ooh. before he came along. But that was exciting. No, it was buying a computer. <laughs> and I had to deal with agents. From all over the country. And I got to tell them, no, we cannot make this policy change. And be like, yeah, okay, well, fuck you too. And they'd hang up on you. It was, I don't know. I didn't know what I was doing. And going back to, you know, Dr. Porter in his class, he, he, um, who was it? Was it was somebody named G or something like that? He was showing us about our uh, like a clock, and it was or like our our time of adventure. You call to adventure and you mm-hmm. go through it. You find your herald, mm-hmm. and you know you you go through these steps. And it was it was in time. the hero's journey. The hero's journey. Yeah. Yeah. And I really took that to heart because I was like, you know, and I told him my my story, you know, and he made me realize, hey, maybe I did suffer through all that just to get here, just for him. I'm suffering right now. 
because of because of the city. <laughs> it's because you because you live here. Because I live here. No, not because I live here. Because I'm not living elsewhere. I saw good, man, and I want it back. I'm sorry. It's all right. It's just you know when you see good, it's good. Yeah, but not everything could be Australia, bro. <laughs> not trying to make everything Australia. Uh, I don't know. You you can. You can have I, you this know, line. We, we have conversations. Amer- Amer- and, and then you you will you'll you'll slide in Australia well in Australia. And I'm like, well, we're not there, are we, Greg? And I'm sorry. Well because I, I wanted you. I only do that off topic with you. <laughs> Cause I wanted you gone. Because I knew you were happy. We'll get back there. Just a little mishap in <laughs> I, was, I was very selfish though. At first I didn't want you to go. <laughs> Like man, because I, I I talk to very few people. Well, when you become a teacher, I'm sure that will change. Maybe not. Nah, you talk to kids. I'll, I'll put in. Oh, the kids, yeah. The kids. Oh hell yeah! I mean, it's gonna be great. Get to know them. Get to learn how to like how they think. Figure out how to teach them properly. Imagine though, if a teacher taught the same class. From like kindergarten all the way to senior, would that do anything mentally, psychologically, but psychologically? The planning for that, what? The planning for that would be that would that would be tough, because you would have to go through. But there would have to be more teachers, because if you're only following that certain group, well, there would have to be more. From te- what you're saying, there's plenty of teachers out there. <laughs> they just give there's, up. There's plenty of teachers who weren't. Prepared adequately, and See? now they they're gone. So you start a whole new like you system. You never know what you could have what could have been. You can start a whole new system now. Nah, but then you got those guys, those, those politicians. All right, get them to work. Call them. They're harass not, them. They're not gonna Email work. Them. They're not. They, they, they don't care. See, it's not about. See? What, it's That's not a about. Problem. No, That's a problem. I'm telling you, it's they don't care because. They could just spin it, and then their donors, that's what it's all about. Their donors keep them there. That's a problem. That's the problem, main problem in this country. It's politicians are just bought It's out. not the politicians. Yeah, well, yeah. It's, it's the people who buy them. Everyone's bought out. There's a real, I don't know. I just find it real weird how uh, city service... Bus company has twenty six board members. What the f- what the fuck do they all do? You know, as much as I want an NFL team here, I it, it would kill it would kill the city. Oh yeah, and perfect example Pittsburgh. What happened there? There's a lot of schools that were shut down because of the stadium. Because of bringing football. Because funding got diverted. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. It's funny how funding for education just gets cut left and right for everything. And like I said, each state does different things. So if you have like, if you have an area where you're invested in some kind of trade, that's where they're going to steer you towards, and they're not going to focus on different types of education, like the different subjects. See, I was so blind to like education growing up. I thought education was great. I got to- it can be. When I got to school, like, started going to, because I went to a private school when I was younger. Hey, you know, and I should probably mention, when, back then, when the Spurs, when they won that, that chip, Woo! <laughs> when the Spurs won that championship, and I couldn't vote at that time, but I did tell my grandmother, I said, I need you to vote against building that new stadium, the AT&T Center. I told her to vote against it, and she voted for it. As a kid, I knew they were going to take money from the city. Because it's not, they don't, those, you think Jerry Jones, Jerry Jones, he didn't no. pay for that. No. He didn't pay for it at all. That's how they keep their money. Yeah. They get the city, the taxpayer yeah. to pay for it all. And that's what, that's crazy, I think. I think ed- people need to be more educated about how their money, how their tax money is being used. And it's like, oh, well, 
well, it's going to bring jobs. And it's like, yeah. What? 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 Nine months out of the year? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Concession jobs? Yeah. What wait, does that do? Security? <laughs> See, I, I, I'm type of... Your like, local bar is going to get filled for about a, uh, nine months out of the year? Like, but so you, what does that do? And the type of investments I'm talking about, when you build a metro, you build those stations where they pick up people. You know what happens around those stations? Shops pop up. Communities pop up. Business pops up. People starts flowing through parts of cities that people usually don't go through. Because why? Because we drive. Take highways. Trains take you other way, other parts of the city that highways don't go. And then along the way, communities, because people want to live by a train station because it gets them from home to wherever they want to go without having the use of a car. I don't know. I think things are changing here in this country. I think everybody doesn't want to, not everybody wants to have a car. But <laughs> No, it's not everybody can afford a car. Look at the, the what is it, the, the Gen Z kids? Is it the Gen Z? I don't know which generation it is, but the ones that are not too far from us, they're, they're not even buying houses. Not buying houses. They're going, they're, going they're going to those universities. The ones you, you <laughs> not buying a house. The ones here. you frown upon. What I graduated from university. <laughs> I have a very expensive piece of paper. Uh, yeah, that doesn't even count for anything because I have to get certified to be a geologist, even though I studied like. But how see, many years the problem it? was is that 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 they the department didn't get the funding to do that. Because there probably wasn't a lot of people like you that enjoy playing with the rocks and Whatever, man. having fun. <laughs> I enjoy playing. Hey, I love geology, man. I do. I enjoyed I think the it's coursework. Very, it's very interesting. I enjoyed the coursework. Wasn't too sure what I wanted to do with my life. I just enjoyed geology. It's, and it's taken me some places that I loved and I want to get back. So I don't regret learning it. Hmm. I wonder where you want to get back to. <laughs> I can only wonder. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's what I think about when I. If you want to invest into your your community, invest in something infrastructure, something that will bring jobs in, but then also build a community at the same time, so that way money's just flowing. You move people, you move money. Yeah, but. And that's, that's but the people step. with the money, they're only going to invest in what they can get back. Mm. That's all they're going to do. And then they're not very smart people. That's all I, I have mean, to say about it. I mean, look at Amazon right now. <laughs> they're trying. They're trying to fight unions, and uh, employees are pissing in buckets and shit. That's, that's fucking. That it's that's fucking insane. That is fucking insane. Uh, I don't know what I gave. I I don't feel like I gave you any substance. I didn't give you any answers. What you all. gave a whole bunch of substance. You being a father, talking about your kid, how you taught him to be a better communicator, and how that <laughs> led to other adults saying that he is a great communicator. Like, what better accomplishment is that? He probably had it all along. Yeah, but so you brought it up. He plans and schemes, bro. He does. You brought it up because you're a great dad and you're a great person. Oh. And thanks for coming on my show, Ernest. <laughs> I appreciate you having me, man. No, nah, man. Oh, what's that shirt you're wearing? Oh. thought it was Taco Cabana, man. No, dude. There's nothing lost, bro. Oh. This is when they had that, uh, that when they sold the, the box TV, uh, the box set. Oh, had the shirt, and the, but they wrapped it in the the burrito. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome, man. Yeah, man. Support your community, bro. You yeah, know, there you go. There you go, man. Awesome. Thanks for coming on to the Primal Texan Experiment, Ernest. All right, man. I appreciate you. Anytime, brother. We'll do this again. Awesome. Cheers.